Object pooling is the answer to optimizing your game. When playing a game of Enter the Gungeon, being the epic game developer I am, I don't play a game for the fun, I play to try and figure out what makes it fun. And I noticed there are a lot of bullets flying on the screen at once, yet the game is still running well. But when I do something similar in Unity, it doesn't run so well. So today let's talk object pooling and how we can implement it in our own Unity projects. First, let's break down what object pooling is. Object pooling involves creating a pool of objects at the beginning of the game when they are needed. Instead of creating new objects, you retrieve an object from the pool when needed and return it to the pool when it's no longer in use. And fortunately, Unity and C Sharp has a great solution to implement this effortlessly. But why implement it? Object pooling minimizes the performance cost associated with creating and destroying objects during gameplay. By reusing existing objects, you can avoid frame rate drops caused by frequent instantiation and destruction. Reusing objects also helps prevent memory fragmentation as objects are not constantly being allocated and deallocated. And it's also a really good way for better resource management. Pooled objects can maintain their state between uses, allowing for more efficient resource management. You've got better control over when objects are created and destroyed, improving overall resource efficiency. In addition to this, with our implementation that we'll do today, objects are always created in one location, meaning we'll always know where they are, meaning if things go wrong from there, then we effectively know the source of it. Let's jump into how we're going to implement this. We're going to create a completely static object pooling class and implement all the methods through there. We're going to have a dictionary, and a dictionary for those that don't know in programming is essentially, well, how a real dictionary works. There's a key and then a value. The key in this case will be the name of the object, so a string, and the value will be a reference to the queue itself, so that we can always grab the last item available in the queue. This system will be done completely generically so that it works for all types of components inside of Unity. Inside of a game manager, we will then implement the actual pool setup. We put it in the game manager simply as it is a universal location and we can always keep track of where these objects are being created. We define what object we want and how many of it we want in our scene by default. Then for our individual objects, we can call the object pooler class and retrieve the object and use it as necessary. Now that we have that out of the way, let's jump into a new Unity project and get this working. For this project, I have set up a simple character controller and I'm working in Unity 2D, but this is completely applicable to Unity 3D as well. The aim for this will be to shoot the bullets and ensure that all bullets are retrieved from the pool of bullet objects. As a preface, I have also set up a bullet controller script which looks like this. The bullet controller is attached to the bullet prefab inside of the project files. Okay, so the first thing that we want to do is create our object pooler class. Now inside of the class, we'll remove the mono behavior property and add it as a static class. We also want to add in the pool dictionary, like so. And we want to set up our first method, setupPool, which takes in a T generic type for pool that in prefab, the pool size, and the dictionary entry. And we want to make sure we define what T is. And in this case, it'll be a component. Then we'll add it into the dictionary and we'll loop through the pool size that we've defined. And for each item, we're gonna instantiate an instance of it. And we wanna default the instances themselves to be false so that they're not active. And we wanna enqueue the uh, property. Now, we're gonna create two methods here for enqueuing the object, which is essentially putting it back into the queue and dequeuing the object, which is essentially retrieving the object. Now, for enqueuing it, we'll take in again a T generic item and we also want to take in a string for the name. Now, if the object is already uh, inactive, then we don't want to really do anything. We can already assume that it's inactive. Um, we want to reset the transform and we want to reset uh, the properties of it essentially. And for dequeuing it, we can use the C sharp method for dequeuing it. We just want to make sure that we typecast it to be a uh, T component. Now we also want to create a game manager script here with a reference to our bullet controller, which will be our prefab. And we'll create the setup pool method um, that we'll call from awake. And that'll just be, we'll just pass in the bullet prefab, the instances that we want from it, and the, uh, the name for the class itself or for the dictionary entry. So as you can see, we started up all items are deactivated, which is good, which is what we want. So the next thing we're going to do is actually retrieving the items. So back inside of our shooter class, uh, we'll start to dequeue them and we'll grab an instance of them, dequeue it, 
and make sure that we set the game, game object itself to be active. So as you can see, whenever we click the button now, we can actually dequeue it, but now we have a problem here, which is the queue is empty. And this is where sort of C Sharp doesn't handle it as well, which is where we're gonna step in, take a new uh, sort of approach to this. Back inside of the object pooler, we wanna have another dictionary here, which is our pool lookup. Um, and the pool look lookup is gonna be set up inside of the initial setup pool method. Um, and it's gonna take in the same entry but we're gonna add in the pooled item prefab. So that way, whenever we create a new instance, we have a reference to the original one. Um, we'll create a new method here, which will enqueue a new instance. And essentially what that does is it sort of does the same enqueue like setup, but we're also creating a new instance at the same time. So when we dequeue, there's a uh, C sharp method called try DQ. If that's false, it's going to create a new instance instead using this new method um, and return that as our property instead. So as you can see, we can start to click and once we reach the limit, it's going to start creating new instances. Um, but how can we do this sort of, you know, actually using and like DQing and enqueuing the properties? We'll get into that now. Um, we'll give the bullets themselves a lifetime. So three seconds here, if the lifetime is exceeded, we're gonna put them back into the cube and disable the game object. Um, and I think it'll be a nice time here as well, inside of the shooter to just put it back to get key so we don't have to keep clicking. Uh, nice and fast now, we are instantiating a lot of objects and as you can see, after three seconds, they go back into the list. But we have another problem here, which is that the objects, uh, once they start to loop around, they actually lose the reference. Um, and that's because we're doing it in start. Start is called once. So we'll create a new method just called initialize. This is kind of a good practice for object pooling items. Um, and every time the object is created or the object is sort of dequeued, we want to reinitialize it. So we'll call the initialize again. Uh, just inside of where it's being, I guess, handled. Um, and we can go back into it now here. And every time it loops around, it's gonna reinitialize the values so that it knows, hey, like I need to, I need to start shooting again. You know, I need to re, I need to get a new lifetime. I need to like, you know, resettle my initial values here. And that's what's happening there. I hope this tutorial was easy to understand, easy to follow. If you guys have any questions or need any help with this, please, don't be afraid to leave a comment. I'll get back to everyone as soon as possible. Um, and I hope you guys enjoyed. I'll catch you guys in the next video. Take care.